Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're back in my shop again. Mitch is behind the camera. We gotta have one person on either side of the camera to make this thing work. Welcome. Today we're gonna to work on the rear brake. We have a list here. Mitch will probably flash it on the screen. There's a lot of little stuff to do, so I'm hoping we can do it in one day. Some things won't take very long at all. Other things are more involved, you'll see. So we're gonna do a quick update on the race bike because we are in the land of Aramaki here, apparently. I'll show you what has happened in this last week here. I shortened some head studs. You can see this is the stock length. There's a few lengths actually, but for this motor, I had to shorten it because other things have been shortened, like the barrel. So I worked on, on, on getting the head nuts torqued down. So to torque down the head nuts, we'll go over and look at the bike in just a moment. I had to make a custom wrench. This is a 17, this is a 19. This is a lot smaller. And also, this is a lot narrower because it has to get into a very tight space. You can see how much. I know this is a 19, so it's going to be a little bigger than the 17. And I also heated it up. You can see the heat stains and I changed the angle. So this wrench got pretty highly modified and that's how, you, how I tighten the head nuts on the bike. So let's just have a peek over there and see what's going on. Here's a, a regular 17 inch, inch combination wrench. And here's the nut we have to tighten up. This one and this one here, they're very hard to get it. So, so can you see that that's not gonna work at all, is it? I can't put this end in because it doesn't even go in far enough. But with my special wrench, and I use it this way, can you see that? So I can, I can, I can tighten things up. So that's what I've done. I've, I've torqued down the head, it's just mock up still. And then what I found is that everything moved back very, very slightly because it was just loose and kind of hanging there. Can you see that? I have to remove some metal. All that red felt pen has to be, has to come off. So that's just one more little thing that we have to do. I have a chain installed on the bike. It's a, it's a 520 chain. It's an RK. I'm told it's a very strong chain. That's important. It, it's non O-ring. O-rings, O-rings take power. I also worked on the exhaust system. This is, this is one that I built a long time ago and it had, and the mount, on, on the bike right here is supposed to be about here and there was a mount here and a mount here. So what I did, I ground them down and I was very careful. First I used an angle grinder, I got a small angle grinder, then I used my belt sander and I, I peeled them off. That's where the mounts were. And I'm kind of proud of the fact that I didn't gouge. So when the new mount goes on and gets welded on and painted, It'll look like a brand new pipe, so that's good. From 1999 to 2005, this shop was Aramaki Northwest, and I used to make a bunch of parts for race bikes such as this, and I used to sell them. The parts that I made were axle adjusters, foot pegs, shifter arms, and bent shifter arms. They had a curve in them. Those are the ones for the street bike and crankcase drain plugs, oil filler caps, crankcase breather fittings, velocity stacks, exhaust systems, and intake manifolds. So I was making parts for Aramaki's, which is a pretty obscure motorcycle like we talked about. And then I was making, making these race parts for Aramaki's. So I used to tell people that it's not even a niche market, it's a micro niche market, but it allowed me to go racing because all the money that I made from the parts went into the company, which was my sponsor for the race bike. So it all worked out and I got a smile on my face. So it must have been a good thing. Today's project is a brake lever. No, we're going to get the rear brake working. I did a little bit of work yesterday to kind of speed up the process. Otherwise, we would be here for literally hours. So I made this piece out of this. I milled it. So what we're going to do now is I got the rotary table set up. We're going to clamp this down. I know how to center it 
and we're going to make a hole. It's slightly under half inch, 0 0.490, and then we're going to make splines. And it's the same, uh, the same process as we did making the, the front brake arms. And that's the tool right there. It's a single point tool that gets mounted in the boring head. And the splines, I've got a worksheet here and 31 splines, so 11.613 degrees. So that's how much the, the arm gets moved every time to cut one spline. You'll see how it works. Let's go to the mill. That's the tool that's going to make the splines. A single point tool, that's what we call it. So I got degrees here, then I do a simple calculation and I got degrees and the minutes because this thing here is the minutes. So, so there's 11 and then I want 37 minutes. So I go up to the 37, that's what I do. Okay, that's, that's the second time around. I'd say that's a pretty good fit. We're going to hone the brake lever. This, this brake lever here, it goes onto this as a pivot. See how it's kind of tight? I got the hone set up. Let's go hone that to make this fit. Can you see here there's a stone? That, that's the stone. And then when I increase the tension, the stone moves out. Each of those is a thou, I believe. So let's see what happens here. just assemble this really quickly so you can see what how it works this is the brake lever so this is the old one now we're gonna make a, a new one I've started on it yesterday a little bit to save some time this just used to stay in one in one spot before I'm gonna make a eccentric stop and because there's no piece of metal, I don't want to drill into the frame and do anything like that. So can you see how this is, that goes that way. There's an extension out here and the, I got a five millimeter thread there. So the stop is going to go held onto there and then I can, I can move the eccentric. And then so when the brake uh, cable, it pulls up, this lever only goes up so much and that's about where it's going to be. So let's go to the hacksaw now and we'll cut this out. I won't sand it up or anything. We'll just have the hacksaw cut. I can file it later and then we can work on the stop. I hope I got the hole in the right place. That would be very very beneficial if I did. So we're going to measure how far out it goes. 775. So if it's a quarter inch, be about 650. I have a brake cable here. This is a, a new OS, new old stock Aramaki cable. So this is probably made over 50 years ago, but I wanted to use it because it is Aramaki. So we're going to make this work. This has to be extended. So I, I have an idea on how to extend it. I haven't, haven't ever done 
that extension before, so we're going to see how this works out. But first off, we've got a piece of metal. Let's go over to the lathe and see what happens. If you want to make an eccentric, you have to offset it somehow. So I have a piece of metal. It's aluminum. We're going to put this under a jaw. And, well, if I have to, have to remake it, I do. But I think this might work. So can you see how I'm putting that in there like that? There we go. Grab my felt pen and we'll see how long to cut this off. Right about there. That's okay, it's a little bit under the surface, but not bad. I think you can all see now how this stop works. Like that and then if I want the lever to be down more well I can, I can put it wherever I want so somewhere in there it'll be good so the cable is going to go over like that we'll put a bolt through here just for the meantime and then we have to make something that goes in here and that's that's the shape right there. That's a little piece of cardboard that I, that I saved from 2001 because that's what I used on my last race bike. And so it goes, that's going to go right like that. Can you see that? How it fits there. And then this has to aim right down to the brake lever. So that's what we're doing next. We're making this. I'll drill the hole first and I'll, I'll tap the hole. And then we'll cut it out on the bandsaw. Then it also has to have a slot here. I guess the slot can go like that because that's where the cable has to go in. So I'm going to start it and then I'm going to switch it off. There we go. I got a foot pedal. That's why I can do that. So if, if you don't have a foot pedal, you might not want to do that. Yeah, it's basically tapped. that I need to aim this at the perpendicular right down there and that looks pretty good I need to file so this fits around there Absolutely perfect, but it's very, very close. So we're going to go with that.
Okay, so I'm going to grab the TIG welder, get it fired up, and we'll put a few little tacks on there. That fitted really well. So that's how that goes like that. And then this is going to get, we have to make a mount that welds onto the swing arm for this adjuster. And we need some bit of space in here. So I think we're going to, we're going to notch this out. Then we'll take out a bit more if we need to. Okay, that looks good. So if we put a mount, if the mount goes right here, that'll work. Another piece of cardboard. So that's how the stock cable holder fits into the fits into the new mount. So what we have to do now is we have to see where this is aiming to. So that goes like that. So the center line here, I can mark it just like that. That's the center line of the cable right there. So the center line of the cable is going to be it's going to be right about there. I need to angle angle this a little bit so that it sits on the side of the tube just a little better. We're using the same piece of ready rod because it's going to aim going to aim the mount for where we want it to be so we don't have a, a kink in the cable. That's not good. If I do one little tic tac right there, I can bend it. Yeah, that moved. How are we doing now? Okay. That's good for now. We're going to move on now. We're going to make, uh, make some other little pieces. In the brake lever, we need a, a cross piece. I don't know what you call it. It's the dowel, the cable stop. We're going to make it out of Delrin. How long can that take? Not long, right? Let's go do that. That's a pretty nice fit. We're 
we're going to ex extend the brake cable. And I have a piece of metal here. And I have a plan. So let's do that next. <laughs> Now we're going to hacksaw it off. I'm going to make a, a six mil thread inside, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm, I'm going to put this end back onto the tap because I can't hold this now. It, it's tapered, and then I'm going to hold onto the tap, and then I'll machine a taper on this side of three degrees. So we'll have a two degree taper and a three degree taper. <laughs> This is a strong tap because I'm going to hold this in the chuck. Actually, we'll do that right now. Hold this in the chuck and thread this on so that we can machine the taper. Then we got to taper on both ends. I like to put some vice grips on there and turn it, but I can't do that. <laughs> oh, I know what I can do. Okay, I got a, I got a plan now. This is a six mil thread. So if I lock this into here, then I can use an Allen screw. Then I don't have to use my finger. How about that? There we go. The whole thing's going to. Oh, look at that. There was something there. Now it's going much easier. Look at that. There was just something on the thread. Okay, so now we can put that back on. I got some shrink wrap tubing that slides right over that. So that's going to hide all these threads. Look at that. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to take off the wheel now and put the brake shoes into the backing plate. It's just mock-up, so I doubt if I'll be putting a lot of grease on or anything like that. But we have brand new brake shoes, Honda. I have to put a washer on there and a 5 mil Allen screw. I know that. So now we'll press this on lightly and I have to figure out the angle. It's gonna, well, we'll just say it goes right about there. Let's try that. I just need to press that on a little bit more. Just a little bit. Right like that. Ok, 
Okay. I got my shrink tubing here that's going to hide the threads. Does a nice job. That's what's on the front. See that slides over nicely and it's almost the same size as this. I have to figure out the knob. I don't don't know if that's going to happen today, but as long as the brake works, this all has to be rounded. I have to drill holes and make it proper. There we go. We have a back brake. Good sign. Back brake. Are we going to do more or? It says we got one more thing to do. We have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make this into some kind of a shape here. And that's my idea. Sort of like the fins on the old 50 Chevys or something like that. You know, the tail fin. This is the side view. This is the top view. So I'm going to make a mark where the top is here. That's how you make a straight line. You put your fingers, your fingers go in between like that. These are very handy. I don't know. A little bit like a rocket ship. I'm saying this one is a prototype. I'll probably make another one, but I'll change the shape maybe just a little bit. I like the shape, but I made the walls a little too thin. That looks a lot better than that big chunk. There we go, we have a back brake. It still needs a few bits kind of fine tuned and all that, but basically it's come together. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed our segment of the rear brake of the Ermaki. Roll that R. Mitch and I like coffee. Please help us out. Take care, see you next week. Stay safe. Blame. Did you get that? Yep. Shit. <laughs> See, it doesn't have the brake shoes in it, so it doesn't stay in there, right? That's what happens. There's no brake shoes to hold it in. Yeah. Well. I don't see where it hit. <laughs>